Cool. I think we are live. Our first ever live stream from uh, StreamYard, whatever this this tool we've been using. Hey, mate. Hey, Andrew. How you hey. going? Yeah, yeah, We're... good. Just digesting well, the content. That so, is, yeah, it's a little feedback. bit. And I'm actually, um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm just actually also streaming it, I think, to Twitch, but who knows? I don't think we have any followers on Twitch, so that's all good. So anyway, sorry about that. Welcome, guys. <laughs> this is uh, Old World Fanatics uh, our emergency live stream was going to be, yep. if anyone's actually listened to our podcast that just literally went up today, mm. we were talking about maybe doing a hobby uh, stream today uh, and sort of yeah. getting a groove for that for a lunchtime stream, just a one hour, just before we've got to run off and do the kid duties. Uh, but we can that because, what, 20 minutes after we hit port stop on the record last night, the, street, the FAQ went up and I went to bed and I didn't even know about it. <laughs> Neither do you, I guess, but... Did you see yeah. Josh's message? Because he sent us a message uh, late last night. We... But... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. About just when it came out. Yeah, I... yeah, but I was uh, in yeah, bed yeah, by yeah. then. So. <laughs> so. Yeah, I saw it and I was like, oh, no. Ah, well, it's fine. It's all good. It gives us a chance to yeah. just, um, I mean, I guess we read it. It's all over the place at the moment. So we thought we'd jump on and, and do that as a our own take on it. So, um I'll bring yeah, that up yeah. and we'll just do that for the next hour or so. If you are watching, uh, get got, enough, got a few people on here, which is cool. Hi, guys. Uh, who's the – I don't know how to say sexy all the time. It's S-S-X-E. I can't remember. How do you actually pronounce that, man? Because you're one of our patrons, I'm pretty sure, but I can never – I don't know if, <laughs> how to actually say that. So, hey, and hey, Gilthos, how you going, mate? Um we yeah if you guys want to chime in as we're talking you're more than welcome to i'll try keep an eye on the chat but uh obviously it's always tricky when you're mm. you're doing it as you go did you just respond to that did you with the hey guys or is that josh no it's me oh it's you okay yeah, okay i'll let you man that then <laughs> that sounds good cool oh no <laughs> we're totally organized <laughs> here <laughs> awesome okay well let's get going um obviously 1.1 the faq came out i think everyone's been waiting for it and people have been telling us privately that it is coming uh, oh man cheers oh, <laughs> thank <yeah>. you Gilfus. <laughs> ten dollars andrew's gyrocopter fund oh, bloody yeah, hell that's yeah, awesome. yeah. well thank you mate thank you very much yeah didn't need yes, that appreciate that's it really good Okay, cool. Awesome. Sexy saying it's it the correct sexy. pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Cool. Okay, so we'll get into this errata. Um, and I guess, guys, as we're going, yeah, pipe in if you think you like or dislike what we're talking about, stuff like that. Um, actually, I do want, before we kick it off too, I do like that, and I don't know if this is the same as the other erratas, but that they're, you know, the asterisk ones are going to be corrected in printing. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I don't know. If, I guess that it probably does happen, but I'm wondering if that's more prevalent in old world because they probably haven't done as many runs, you know, as much if you don't. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be useful because I remember the sixth edition one, like I cut out all the erratas and stuck it in the rule book, but now I'm a little bit yeah. hesitant to do that. So, that's what whoa, I was oh! just, whoa. Okay. Oh! We have to, we just got another, uh, <laughs> we just got another 25 bucks for the jar. Okay. I think Andrew's got to buy, get a gyrocopter uh, and he's going to paint it up specifically for old world fanatics somehow. <laughs> oh, you put too much pressure on me now. <laughs> too much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love I'll it. assemble it. Cool. Um, <laughs> let's no let's get out of this. We got to. We want to try and keep this to an hour, and you know, you know, us. This is going to be hard. But anyway, let's. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, it yeah. has to be an hour because we've got to go. So, um, can waffle on. Yes, yes. I should. I should change my name. Uh, so, combat result page one hundred one. And Andrew, I don't know if we if we confused as to what um, uh, what the ruling is referring to. Just I mean, maybe you might have to look it up because I've got the PDF up here. Uh, so whilst in combat, so this is cool. This is basically saying close order is unit strength five or more. So you're getting rid of those little units of two, but probably not affecting the obviously not affecting the lumbering a lot um, because. No. They're mostly got at least five wounds. But things like the Scorpion, I'm yeah. pretty sure that's a closed order monstrous creature with three wounds, so it wouldn't get um yeah. it wouldn't get close order, is that correct? So it is affecting a few things. Yeah, that Yeah, yeah, that'd be the same with the Vamps with their um I think yeah, it's only um, four the, wounds on the Vargo 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Big that's deal. pretty cool. And in our mm. current game that we haven't finished, you got three dwarfs left in my flank, so they don't get a close order. <laughs> Not in this game. We'll kind of start counting it properly in the second game. <laughs> no, no. They still get the Stromny uh, Redbeard banner, but 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, heavy cash. Um, I don't even know what changed in that wording around 25%. Nah, there's um, some that's, I think it's just people just looking at wording too much and maybe the wording was a bit, yeah. Maybe, don't know. Now there's a bunch of here and these are going to be very similar where they've just clarified um, really just that you just need the majority of the unit. So this is probably related to like unit chan oh, sorry, characters going into some of these skirmishes and stuff and not breaking some of the special rules, which I like, although it doesn't affect my Tomb Kings, I don't think, because it's a bit annoying. Um, so chariot runners, uh, as long as the majority of the unit um, have it, then they still have it. Um, and just correct me, Andrew, if I'm skipping on, and I'm wrong on these. Uh, evasive is the same thing. It, nothing's really changed. It's just um, if it's the mo majority, the models have that in their uh, in the unit. Same as fire and flee, I think. Was that one as well, wasn't it? Majority. Yeah, mm. if the majority is fire and flee. So that's cool because it's just stopping that annoyance. You go put a character who doesn't have that special rule and then people argue that you can't do it. Um, random movement. When a model with this special rule rolls, roll the dice to determine its maximum movement. This one's a big one. Um, this is basically saying that, yeah, I roll 3d6 for my mangler. I roll 18. I only need to move. I can move anything up to 18. I don't have to move 18. Um, is that how you read that one? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going back. I've got the rule book out. Oh, no. I'm looking at the heavy yeah, casualties one. You keep going. Oh, right. No worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think with the random movement, I mean, that's that's a that's a buff to random movement and there's a negative, there's a uh, debuff coming up. So I think it's good. It just means that, especially with orcs and goblins, and I'm guessing with a lot of them, like sometimes you have random movement, like, you know, especially your hero, you put him on a giant cave squeak and he ends up going like your old triple sixes and he's off by himself up the board. Uh, whereas this is basically saying you could, um, it's your maximum movement, not not what you have to move yeah but also I, i'd assume it means random movement you can move zero stay still i think there's no reason you know where you always just have to move so at least that's how i'm reading it um let us know guys if that's not right andrew looks in no no i was just catching up in, he's studying yeah, yeah <laughs> do you reckon I, that's right uh i'm not a i'm not a big expert on random movement because none of my stuff has got yeah. it so i will, I will oh, okay. reserve yeah. the right to defer comment. cool okay <laughs> uh reserve move same thing it's the majority of the um as long as the majority of the unit have it they get it uh which is nothing much changed there just again clarity 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 that's what i like um yep. and same thing with swiss stride uh, a unit which consists entirely of models with this special rule increase their maximum mm. possible charge so this actually stops you doing it, it you know it's the reverse a little yeah. bit it's mostly yeah. saying how hey, you need everything needs to be swiss stride for the unit yeah. to have it which, which i really guess good. is great because it's moving yeah. yeah um and then we've got a couple of erratas on magic items um the basically the berserker blade is making sure that uh it's the welder is frenzied i'm not even sure what it wrote before that is that maybe just yeah. to stop <clears throat> it, it might the, be um, model the unit possibly. and stuff or the more, yeah, yeah. and then the bedazzling helm's got a nerf to basically just stop you putting on dragons and stuff, which I think yeah, is going to help a little bit, awesome. but I wouldn't say, yeah, it's probably, you know, so I think some of the chaos lords used to put it on. Is that right? Um, mm. That's the minus one to hit one, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So it just says frenzied magical attack special rule. So um, maybe people were putting it onto their mounts. Yeah, so that's yeah, which I add, think, add, adding clarity for the welder. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot the of wheel, that wheel wielder, good. wielder. So, yeah, I think this might be the first time I've seen him. Um, <laughs> errata, a quick reference sheet, which is quite funny. Mm. Uh, so they just fixed up that bit around the casting roll. It you have to exceed it, which is cool. Which we, we, I think yep. most people played it that way anyway. So there's nothing much yep. there. Um, and then we get in the FAQ. So I like I like what they tried to do here too, where they put. If they've updated the FAQ, it's blue and it's magenta. Yeah. It's a new thing. Um, <clears throat> so this one is, so as soon as this came out, ASP messaged me saying, awesome. 
no take backsies and you can't mark <laughs> stuff. It's, this is, it will be very interesting. So this first one is, you know, if I mark a position of a unit, then proceed to move it uh, before putting it back where it was and moving again, does this count as a take back? And they say, yes, absolutely. And I think the first paragraph almost in the rules is there's no take backsies. Um, mm. It will be interesting to see how people play this. I know casually there's a lot of people who just go, no, bugger that, I'll still do it. Um, but definitely worth making sure you're playing this right because I think if you competitively, if you're in t tournaments, mm. you know, there's, you, yeah, if you start moving something and, you know, there's no, yeah, you can pre-measure, but um, there's a lot more like, yeah, I think I can make that, I'm going to start moving it, I'm going to commit, even if, for example, the charge then fails or, you know, maybe you can't move as far or you get blocked, so you, you still have to move the unit, but only as far as it potentially could, because I guess this is where it gets a bit grey, like, if you yeah, do something don't... that you fit, you know, rule base can't do it. Yeah, because you're going to get people with like a little ruler out and then they're going to be like, oh, I, can... I won't move the unit, I'm just going to get, because you can pre-measure, I'm going to get my mm. ruler and you could get people piss farting around even more so um i would say as long as you don't take your hand off the unit sort of thing or mm, that's like chess yeah yeah something like that so just once you've positioned it um because you, you're allowed to pre-measure so the mm. problem with this is like you're still going to have other ways of piss farting around which we're trying to avoid that, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's, we'll see. I feel, see I, I sort of like the the idea that it's more like when you've, you've committed to moving that unit and you can still like move it around, that doesn't work, put it back, move it around. But once you go to another unit or a dice roll or something, I reckon like that's a better yeah. rule, which I thought was sort of what it was saying on page 92. Yeah, that's what Gilthos just came up. This is saying you can take back as long as dice are not rolled. Um, yeah. You know, I think that's probably fine. It sort of doesn't stop that. Um, but, yeah, I'd always just want to make sure that that's, I don't know, you have to clarify it, like, you know, that it's not going to be totally... Just yeah. once you start moving, yeah, I don't know. I yeah, don't, I don't like the idea of once you move, you have to move to a certain degree. Um, so, so if you commit to a move, um, you'd mm. have to move possibly. I, I wouldn't mind that, but maybe not just, you know, because you might not know exactly how far you can move. So at the end of the day, you're going to be moving around anyway, yeah, well, that's, aren't you? Well, yeah, that's exactly right. There's going to be some cases where, you know, what you wanted to do couldn't work and that's why you moved yeah. it to check it, like, you know, if it can fit in or whatever it is. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But, I mean, it is saying you can take it back, but moving it again is a take back. So, who knows? Um, <laughs> but they, I think I think what Gilthos is saying, and you have to check, is, um, is you can throw, as long as you haven't, it's, it's a take back, but it's not a legal one because you haven't rolled a dice. Yeah. Oh, the agree. next thing, which I think is fine. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Um, make, yeah, so he's saying this is marking, taking back is okay. Absolutely opposite. Okay. Oh, yeah, cool. Okay, well, hopefully that's good. Um, but more clarity is always good. Uh, can a unit, I'll skip the black ones, I think, because, you know, hopefully we already know yeah. those ones. Um, how does a close order unit of just one model act as still a close order? Does it act like a skirmisher? No, it's it's just um, close order. So that's just when you killed down a unit to one. I guess characters by themselves are still lone characters, I guess, so they're still skirmishers. Um, now, how did that come up? Gilthus just had a... Cool. I don't know how his comment's coming up on our stream or does it always do that? I don't even know. <laughs> but that's good. <laughs> it's popped up on the screen for me. <laughs> I don't know how uh, this program works. That's awesome. With, with great power comes great responsibility, Gilbert. <laughs> yeah, no idea. <laughs> Must be a popular comment. People have upvoted him. Maybe that's yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Just don't want to say any naughty stuff on the screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. all. That's funny. Uh, does a unit count yeah. as being obscured when some of the models within it are behind others? No. Again, I mean, is that with models with more than one figure on them, or is that just skirmishes? You know, like you. If you're shooting at skirmishes, they're all classed as sort of the front rank, so to speak. So you're not like, you know, none of them. You can't argue that half of them are obscured. Is that all that's saying? Uh, yeah. Well, that's kind of. I think. 
I don't know. I've never run into that, but I'm assuming it's probably something related with skirmishes and wood elves. No, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, yeah. Magic. Uh, if a wizard has a magic item or special rule that allows them to re-roll the casting roll, but they roll a natural like one, uh, can they re-roll that one to get avoid the miscast? And that's a no. Um, I thought I would have played it that way, but I guess, guess I haven't come up to that situation. Yeah, I would have thought too, but... I mean, that's, yeah, the chance of getting miscast is quite low. So, I mean, to make it just a smidge more possible, yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah. no, I like, I like the changes. If you see the double ones come up, bang, it's a miscast. You don't even get a chance. Yeah, it's too bad. To, yeah. 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 It's not even a failed Stop. cast, so which is what they're clarifying. So, you can't even use an item that re-rolls the cast because it wasn't yeah. a failed cast. I like it. Um, what happens? Can a wizard with a physical attribute that counts as a type of armor still cast a dispel. Yep. Um, again, I would have classed it. I think I would have played it that way anyway because um, they yeah. actually haven't bought armor or anything. It's just uh, nah, nah. counts as. So that should just be good. Counts again, as, they're just clarifying yeah. that stuff, so that's good. Mm. Um, movement is can a unit that rallies and reforms during the rally phase move? Yep, cool. We've been playing it that way. It was To me, it was pretty obvious, but that's good to know. Yeah, I'd like to see if you could march. I don't know. Did we look that, that up and it was like you can't charge a march and you counter shooting? Oh, possibly, oh, no, was yeah. It, you can't march. Yeah, I can't. I remember we looked can't it up. Can't march. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, game. yeah. Yeah, that's right. It is in the rules, isn't it? Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you yeah. Can just yeah, do a standard, standard move. And can a unit move while locked in combat? No. Um, I... <laughs> I was listening to one other stream and they were just saying that's probably because it was never actually defined that you can't just move out of combat. It's just like, mm. it's like a holdover from just, it wasn't, I, I'm just trying to think of outside of just them not saying that what other things, um, yeah. Yeah. would have affected that. So I don't know. It's funny cause they're locked in combat, but they do move cause when you follow up and give ground, they move. So that's kind of funny. This whole def definition of model yeah, yeah. and movement is a bit weird still, but anyway. Hey, it's a game. It's all good. <laughs> uh, does a unit that has to declare a charge due to being frenzied or impetuous have to do so if a friendly unit of skirmisher lies between it and a potential charge target obstructing its movement? Um, so basically, no, but if the skirmishers had already declared a charge and were, you know, were getting out of the way in some fashion, then yes. So but I guess then that's up yeah. to you to... To work that out you know make sure you're doing it in the right mm. orders so to speak um yeah and i guess it's not even in the right order really in some sense because you could screw yourself because all charges are um everything's technically simultaneous so if you had a frenzied or impetuous unit behind a skirmisher unit and then you were like oh no i'm not gonna you know i don't need a test and then you do something else and then you move your declare a charge with your skirmishers yeah. You don't have to make yeah, sure you go, to, oh, hang yeah. on. Well, now you have to go back and do the frenzy test because technically yeah. it's simultaneous maybe. So it's interesting. Yeah. Um, but don't you do impetuous? When you do frenzy impetuous, that's probably before declaring charges. So this thing, you're sort of thinking ahead. It's got rules related mm. to phases that are... Oh, I can't right have to check that. Feels like impetuous is at the start of turn, is it? Probably friends I would be as well and stupidity. Thought, so yeah, one he's those, probably right at the beginning. One of those starter starter turn sub phase, yeah. But you don't really know you're gonna Surely. declare a charge until <laughs> movement phase. It's a bit weird. Uh mm. anyway, this is the big one. Although it cannot make a charge move, a unit in marching column can declare a charge. Why is that? Because if they got drilled, they can get out of it. So we've been playing drilled correctly, Andrew. So that's good to know. What do you think of that? <laughs> well, I like it because I think that's what it's there for. Um, otherwise, yeah. why are you really paying for it? Um, but yeah, there's obviously going to be a few people upset. But I mean, it's part of a game mechanic. You got to pay to get it. Um, yeah. So, especially for dwarves, I think it's good because it's going to give you at least a chance to march. Um, yeah, I think you'll definitely see more of those marching columns with dwarves, won't you? Just to get up yeah. the board a bit then. Yeah. Just for one turn. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. The, only, the end of the day, you're only getting another few inches. But, hmm. I mean, it's better than nothing, isn't it? 
might also help. You know how, like you were saying uh, in the podcast that, you know, like sometimes you, you, you're running out of room to deploy a bit. Yeah. So your the dwarves might be a lot smaller uh, unless they're getting charged turn one by some fast stuff that you didn't realize and then you're stuck in marching <laughs> column, which would suck. But, <laughs> you're in trouble. Um, yeah. yeah. So, but still, I think that's, no, nah, it's a good change. Um, yeah. I think the worst changes here are related to not, they're not changes, is just drilled around, you know, it's not really the drilled issue. It's around, you know, that you can, uh, you know, use drilled when you get pushed, like give ground. I think they clarify it somewhere as well. Um, and, you know, just obviously reforming on a for buy, for buy go move is that those things are a bit annoying that you're losing and mm. getting benefits, but that's not really related to drilled as such. Nah, nah. Agreed. Agreed with, yeah, both. Everything. Yeah. All. Uh, do they say anything else in this eternally? Yeah, eternally there might be a psychological advantage to clearing a charge. This is cool. With a charging marching column, for example, the unit might cause terror or the charge target may already be fleeing. Of course, this isn't easy. So imagine if you had, yeah, like, you know, small units of, um, you know, small units that you can easily put into marching column. Um, mm. but give them terror somehow or whatever, and suddenly that you know you're not having to commit them, but they're causing terror tests. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, think about it. there might be some little, uh, little the old darts, you know, rat dart, not rat darts, but you know, something like that where you've got tiny little <laughs> units of like five or something, yeah, and they're yeah. in lines, just to try and do that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, terror darts, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> If a drilled unit in marching column has to declare a charge due to being frenzied or impetuous, can it choose not to to use drilled to address the ranks? So this is interesting too. So if you've got the drilled rule and you're in marching column, you have to use it to get out of it to make the charge, which is kind of funny. Yeah. Which, I mean, it makes sense. It just means you, you can't stop. If you're a drilled yeah, you unit, can't. you can't use, yeah, you can't use marching column to stop yourself getting out of that frenzy or impetuous state. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I want to charge an enemy unit, that is a, I don't know, this one's dumb. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Basically if the large target is in combat and you want to charge a large target, but you can't get to it cause you're already, your other units are already in combat with it. Can you charge its flank? It's, no, sometimes the charge isn't possible. No. I think that was maybe some beginners that just yeah, you know, yeah. wanted some clarity on that potentially. Yeah. Um, there's no space. There's no space. <laughs> yeah. Then we're into still no, shooting this. So some chariots equipped with large scale missiles, weapons such as bolt throwers. Who shoots such weapons? Um, they're just basically saying missile weapons are always shot by uh, the crew using their ballistic skill. Um, I think somewhere else there's a character one around that as well, just saying, no, it's definitely the the crew. Um, yeah, with characters, again. I think they usually <laughs> state that the character can use, can shoot. Because um, high elves yeah. were like that in previous editions, I'm not too sure in this edition, but um, if the character was in a uh, sky cutter, they could use their ballistic skill for the, yeah, uh, while right. they manned the bolt yep. thrower. Yep, yep, um, yep, so it's specific, so, otherwise but, it's but the crew. But it was worded, yeah. worded in that way, yeah, so. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, no, like, uh, so combat models in the fighting rank that are killed before they have a chance to fight cannot, but can, a model so but can a model make a supporting attack if the model is in front is slain so this is the whole spear stuff uh, and they're saying yes yeah. so again i won't go into the reading of this but there's a lot of people wordsmithing that you know the front rank guy yeah. dies and so the guy behind him it can't attack because he's not behind a you know a model that can fight and all yeah. this sort of stuff um because he stepped up so then the guy behind him can't because yeah so the cool thing is just how many models are there uh, in the front rank and back rank and, you know, they basically yep. can fight until, like, they've all been killed if they've been killed before their initiative step. So I like yeah. that, which is how yeah, so I would can... have played it, but I don't think we've played yeah. it in Spears too much, have we? No. Nah. So, yeah, Wait, if maybe. you wipe out the front front rank, you can still continue wiping out the supporting yeah. rank, effectively yeah. taking yeah. those as well, which is really good. Yeah. Good wording. Uh, how many attacks can a model with a split profile make if it's in the fighting rank but not in the base contact with an enemy? And this is mm. each. This is where the model bit gets a bit dumb. But each actual, it's almost model like each part, profile. Yeah. They really need to bloody yeah. define this better. But basically, each profile gets one attack, um, which makes Cav 
very like it boot it boosts them up a bit here because mm. we wouldn't have played yeah. it this way would we would have had one attack maybe from the rider would you yeah i'd probably say that um yeah so that's probably what i, what, I can't and maybe that was just me taking it from an eighth edition you know supporting attacks to only get the the you single know, the rider gets yeah. it but this is um saying no like if you have a you know, wide unit of cav they're all getting to, that's two attacks yeah, which isn't, yeah, it's not going to be like a massive deal because, I mean, in the end, you, you're going to get the horses, so you might get the extra pipa wound or something like that. Um, so, yeah, so it's but good. like demigriffs yeah. and stuff, like monstrous cav, I mean, it's pretty good if they, they're probably not going to be lined up massively wide because they're so expensive, but um, yeah. potentially. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. I mean, if, if you're getting a single attack, it's, yeah, it's. Yeah, there you go. Balls and Demogriffs are better of Gilthos. Uh, Sexy said, does, so does a Dwarf King on shield get four attacks? I'd, again, I'd probably, like, this is the thing. Like, if you look at profile, I guess, it, I bet you he doesn't because he's probably got the King and the um, yeah the Bearers are shield in one bear. profile. But if yeah. you're actually saying, well, hang on, this is saying model, then this is the thing. They need to define that better still. And I'm just assuming Each that I haven't model. looked at the Dwarf King shit. Like, you'd have to open up yeah, and have a look. That's really, yeah, that is right. Each model on the base. But like, what about, I mean, again, it wouldn't be, you wouldn't have units of these, but you know, the ones with powders with like eight goblins, like the spiders, but I mean, you're never going to have that anyway, because they're not units of them. So yeah, uh, I think I would prefer bit... if they just said like a line, a profile line gets to attack. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. One, one attack from each profile. Yep. Each but again, the king the is the king ever. I guess uh, yeah, the king's hanging out to the side. Yeah, I. Uh, here, here we go again, needing another FAQ from an FAQ. But anyway, because <laughs> they can't define. All they need to do is define what model means. But they probably can't because they've misused model and movement and profile yeah, yeah. and armor value through the whole book so if they tried to define it it would fuck the whole book up even worse probably that is yeah that that is <laughs> that's that's great i could say there's going to be arguments yeah. now on that yeah. <laughs> oh well. uh, Roll do, 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 do. Or not. yeah can a close order unit of just one model claim the close order combat is that just similar to what this yeah okay they've already said it yes provided that unit strength five or more okay yeah yep yeah, that's fine mm. Um, now this is where they errated that stupid thing about weapons. Was it, if my unit loses a round of combat and either gives ground or falls back, can it use to choose a different weapon in the next turn? I think this was the one they just totally scrapped that whole bloody fluff piece about, oh, just in time to throw away your spear or your broken lance and pick up another weapon. And, and then everyone got confused. Ooh. Um, so they're basically saying that, in other words, because the combat's ongoing, neither is able to swap one weapon for another. It hasn't fully yep. answered exactly what happens with lances, and we might get onto that. I mean, I think I think it's pretty clear, but I don't know if you know, Andrew, like when you get your lance bonus versus when you use your lance and stuff. It might be further. I think they might mention more of that. Let's just go through first. Oh, okay. so. Yeah. Um, whoa. Sorry, I don't know what happened yeah. there. Uh, uh. Nope. Uh, uh. My zoom went stupid when I was scrolling. Let's go back and I'll zoom back in. Okay. Uh, challenges. If a wizard engaged in a challenge, knows and uses an assailment spell that can hit multiple enemies. Um, basically, this is in challenges. Obviously, assailment spells always just go against the participant. I thought, okay, so this is an errata. Yeah, because this was in the FAQ, but it must have been written a bit weird. Uh. Yeah, cool. Elio's saying they clarify the lance bonus later in the dock. Okay. Um, I just asked though, Elio, if you're in, if you charge with your lance as you hit um, and they fall back and then you go again, you still get your lance bonus, but is that right? But what happens in another case where you charge in with your lances, they don't like you don't fall back that you basically even draw so no one lost so then the next round of combat you're then back to hand weapon and then say you win that they fall back in good order what weapon are you using do you know what do you know that andrew like 
Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm replying to sexy. <laughs> okay, cool. Anyway, I, they'll hear that and people can answer that case. Yeah, yeah. It seems like, it feels like to me that if you're in a round of combat and having to switch to your hand weapons, because, you know, that's what you do with lances after the first you know, round, if you haven't then for Vigo, but once you do do a for Vigo or give ground, you're not swipping, switching weapons. So if you've switched to your hand weapon previously in a previous round of combat, for whatever reason, then you're stuck with it. You can't get your lance back out. Yeah. I think that's how it is, but I, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so this is new. If one participant in challenge calls impact hits or makes stomp attacks where they... Where are they directed? They're all directed against participant in the challenge. Uh, I thought that was always the case, but then maybe, obviously, they've added it in here. So maybe we had, were we just thinking that from old editions? I don't, I don't know. Because mm. in fact, hits make stop start. Yeah, well, that, that's what I thought. Yeah, but I can't remember. Is I it thought, not written in the book then? Oh, I thought well, it, it mustn't be. I, I thought that was always the thing. Like, everything's directed into the challenge. Mm. Like, stomps and, yeah. Like, I, I, if you're in a chariot and you take a challenge, you, you cop yeah, all those you get impact it all. hits. That's but how maybe, we maybe, yeah, yeah, I was maybe. just wondering if it's a holdover and it wasn't actually in the book. I yeah, no. Nah. I have to go back. Nah. Um, and then if one... This is cool. I do like this clarified. Again, this is probably how we always play it. If one participant in a challenge is killed, can the other models then, at their initiative step, basically start attacking the other person? So, and they're saying no. In that one combat phase, um, that challenge is yeah. like locked. Even if one dude dies beforehand, you can't then. Yeah. So it just yeah. makes it simple. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then we get to universal special rules. Does the Armor Bane X special rule apply to spells, uh, like assailment spells, magic missiles? No. Um, so basically, no, which is good. I think some people are trying to do that. Yeah, so with an assailment spell, if you are using your weapon, but that'd still count, wouldn't it? Because it, it's Armor Bane for your weapon. It says weapon, I, I think. Yes, yeah, word. and somewhere so you know else you, I think they do start doing that. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 They, yeah. They, got a little bit more um, particular in the definition there. Yeah, sorry, Plasma David. I did skim yeah. through some of the legacy stuff, but not fully, but I did hear something about that the the uh, slan has changed unit type, or whatever it's called, troop type, from monstrous Ooh. infantry to monstrous creature, something like that. So it oh, sort of screwed nice. up what he can do. So um, Paul Lizardman. Oh, okay. uh, although I have no idea if it's a good or bad change, but it just sounded like what people were saying that it was bad, but... Anyway, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just trying to catch up on your comments, guys, around the uh, the Dwarf King. I think, yes, four attacks, one reach for the shield bearer, one for the king, but I'm not, not sure how the fart sniffer at the back could go if you get a swing as he's carrying his big, thick king. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's no logic in Warhammer. But anyway, it's all good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Can a drilled unit redress the ranks before giving ground? Yes, a unit that gives ground is not a fleeing unit. So obviously it's it's ironic to me that you can't use drilled to redress your ranks when you give ground, but if you if you fall back in good order, you can do a full reform, which is better than a, a reform ranks anyway. Mm. I think you yeah. can, can't you? Yeah, because you can do that. Yeah, because <laughs> it's an auto rally. Yeah. Uh, weird, but anyway, is what it is. Um, well, they do yeah, mention that whole. It's, a, it's another. I was gonna say it's another good thing about drill. Then, like, it's just drilled mm, mm. at the start. I'm like, yeah, drill. Why do I want drilled? And now I'm just like, I want everything to be drilled. Like, it's. Yeah, it's a good helps. useful thing, and even Martin. Well, it even makes yeah. again. We were arguing, what the hell, when will you ever see Marching Column in this game? Unless it mm. drill did what it does. And I don't know, because the people who were, like, we, we admittedly have been on the, yes, you can always charge drill bandwagon, at least I have. Um, but yeah. I just couldn't see what the advantage of Marching Column was if you couldn't do that. You just, you know, nah. just stuck yeah. in it. Um, yeah, it's good. Th and they do make this funny, uh, this 
case that technically, I guess if you're in a big unit, you could basically go to Lion Hammer to stop yourself getting pushed off the board, which is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, do effects that uh, modify a model's movement characteristic also modify how far a model with the fly X special rule? And yes, they do because, cool, yep. they've basically said that the fly X is like a second movement characteristic, which that's a good answer because I was always a little worried that things like the my will be done and all that, you know, we've been playing that way flies. that I can get like, <laughs> yeah, I can get like at least a 12 inch fly with my dragon and stuff. But I wasn't sure if that was correct. Um, and then on the other hand, they've also clarified that yes, you can't cumulative add two fly special rules. So that's cool. All good. Sorry, I'll, I'll Delivery. be Delivery. Delivery time. Yeah, continue solo. My dog's gone oh, no off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, while he's doing that, I'll just mute him. Hopefully he sees that he's muted. Uh, cool. Uh, then if a unit with a frenzy or impetuous has two movement characteristics, um, basically it does it have to use the greater. Uh, yeah, basically he's got to use whichever one helps getting into combat, I guess. Well, he's back. I've muted you, man. Uh, unmute. There you go. Okay. Unmuted Sorry. you. Um, you only miss one, which is frenzy or impetuous. You need to use your highest movement, like to try and get into combat, which is cool. Uh, if a unit oh, that yeah, has yeah. subject to frenzy becomes a fren uh, frenzy again, does it get two plus two attacks? No, it's not cumulative. It's funny that they say that there, where Ooh. really they should have errated frenzy just to say add the the line that this special rule is not cumulative. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, kind of think that would have been an easier thing to do, but anyway. And uh, yeah. where else? Ah, now this one is interesting. Can a unit with a random movement special rule move around or past an enemy unit out of one arc and into another before making contact with that unit? No. Whilst units that move randomly do not declare charges, if you wish to move into contact with an enemy unit, it must fulfill the same criteria as any other charging unit during its movement. That's a big change to random movement. It's different to pretty much how it's always been, I think, in eighth and all that as well. But I think it's good. You don't get those stupid things where you roll high so you go around the back or coming from the side. Um, you're still effectively doing a charge move, but you're just, you're just not declaring charges or getting charge reactions, I guess. Yeah, I thought random movement, you could only go straight. No, no, Wait. that's eighth. But no, it's a movement. In 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 uh, old world, it's basically whatever your troop type still is. So if, like if you're a monstrous creature, like the mangler, he still gets the, you know, he's got to do a wheel and stuff. But like the the um ah. the squig hoppers are skirmishers, so yeah, they right. can go freaking anywhere, you know what I mean? So you could like go crazy and go around the sides and all that stuff. But at least now they're saying so the random you, know, you have to charge just so, so the random's just the distance? Basically, yes. Are that you your just... movement is for that oh. turn, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. No, I thought you just, yeah, I thought you had to pick away and then roll and just, yeah. But in, that makes but sense. in eighth, That's good, good rule. yeah, well, in eighth you used to do that, but you could like, even if you're sort of in the front, but if you rolled high enough and just one straight line and hit the flank, you could just do a flank charge and they couldn't do jack about it. But now they're saying here is if you're yeah. in the front, you have to go into the front, yep. um, like mm. any. So that's good. It just stops some of that stupidity. Yep. Um, how far does a unit with random movement give ground? Two inches. That's cool. Um, can that two regen saves be combined? No. So again, just you know, be better if they just dump that but... cumulative section and just wrote it in separate. Yeah, yeah. They probably should just switch it and say no rules are cumulative <laughs> except the ones that we list. I don't know. Yeah. Might have been easier. Yeah, um, it would have been. Da, da, da. So I'm just saying if there's any, no more comments, that's cool. If a unit with stupidity special rule fails its leadership test, how long is it stupid for? Unit tests for stupidity in each of their start of turn subphases, unless they engage in combat. By extension, a unit that fails a stupidity test remains stupid only until it passes a subsequent test. I mean, yep, it's fine. I'm not sure why that was. I don't know if anyone knows why that was asked as such. I mean, all of these, they must have had questions, but. Um, maybe, I yeah. don't know, maybe, um, oh, anyway, it is what it is. If a unit of skirmishes succumbs to stupidity, in which direction do they move? 
they should continue moving in the general direction they moved the previous turn or if they did not move in the previous turn towards the nearest enemy unit. Weird. It makes sense. It, yeah. Is the skirmish, is the stupidity rule, remember we were talking about this when you failed it with your like, uh, was it your Terragoss? No, not Terragoss. What was it? The um, Your guy on the, with the... Oh, yeah, yeah. My Mortis engine. Yeah. The four up ward it... gave him the necromancer stupidity. Yeah, and what did the ruling say again? That wasn't a bit. We weren't even sure one hundred percent what was it. Just did it just say move yeah. forward or just say move? All they can do is just move up. Uh, count, or do they even have to move up to their movement? Like this sort of says yes, they have to. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It might just say move forward, but it might not say how much. I, mean, I don't know something like that. It's it annoying was, to it bit switch between books here. So it was a bit ambiguous. Yeah, I remember. I it was like, a bit yeah. ambiguous. Yeah. Uh, Swiss stride enables a model to move further during a charge move than its maximum possible charge range. Why is that? Yeah, okay. They give you a bit of fluff here that because models with this special rule delight in running down cowards who flee before a charge. Um, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> I think that whole plus three, plus D six just confused people. But, I mean, I think it makes sense once you know what you're doing with it. Um, mm. To me, it just... The real reason is it gives you Cav way more chance of actually getting in those long charges, but does prevent how far someone can charge in terms of declaring a charge in the first place. So I think that, you know, I think it's Yeah, just it just says move thing. straight ahead. It doesn't say, doesn't but say, it doesn't say how distance. much. It just says like, can I do one inch? Can ahead. I do half inch? Yep. Can I do, can I do point exactly. one, yeah, one, yeah. one hair of a move? <laughs> like it's a bit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Very, yeah another one where i reckon a lot of us are just taking what we used to know which is move it they move their full distance straight ahead or whatever uh which may not be true yeah uh characters a character mounted on a ridden monster or chariot can choose to use their own or their mount's armor value whichever is better if the character wears magic armor but i choose to use the mount's value armor value can i still claim other benefits by conferred by the magic armor no you must use Sorry, so I thought someone's coming. <laughs> no, you must use a magic item fully or not at all. So that's the the armor of ages, which has pretty much been clarified. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so that's good to know. Yeah. So that's all good. Yeah. Uh, if a character mounted on a ridden monster carries a shield, does that improve the mount's armor? No. Um. So I guess most people started to realize that. I was wrong on that initially when I was first reading yeah. it, but ages ago. Um. But makes sense. Um, mm, yeah, I like this one. If a warband character joins a unit that isn't warband, does the unit's rank bonus modify their leadership? No. So really, warband is a unit rule, really, isn't it? And then it, mm. the warband character—it's like the loner character and a loner unit. Um, they sort of work together, yeah. and if they're not together, then it doesn't sort of thing. Probably a bad yeah, yeah. example, but you get my get what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I get what you're saying. Some magic weapons or special rules allow specific models uh, within a unit to be targeted. Do such attacks ignore lookouts, sir? No. I mean, that's the one that we were thinking, you know, things like the sniper rifles and stuff uh, got nerfed because they get lookouts, sir, and they've confirmed, yeah, yeah they get lookouts, sir. So I'm like, ugh, that's... Yeah, um, that is. Including a lot of the giant attacks that are a bit like this, where you target a particular... That's Model and they'll always get lookouts, uh, so it's pretty hard to like, grab yeah. like a dwarf lord out of a unit and kill it. I think you know stuff like that. Mm. Bit of a shame. I like some of the sniper rifle. Yes. Like the, the Empire. Was it the Hockland? But anyway. Yeah, yeah. Think you'll see him. The Hocklands. Uh Do special rules conferred by a model's weapon apply to attacks made by that model's mount? And no. And I guess that's what you were sort of referring to about the armor bane X and stuff. We've got a couple of examples here. I won't go mm. through them, but they're just trying to really break apart the mount and the and the bearer and stuff, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing surprising there for you. No, no. Uh, monsters have weapons with some monsters have weapons with notes that stack. They must make or may choose to make one attack or one additional attack with that weapon in combat. Can they make more than one attack? So this is the 
the doppelganger, uh, doppelganger <laughs> FAQ. Uh, no, if it's noted on a weapons profile that the model may must make a specific number of attacks, then um, that's all they get. So basically, yeah, you're not getting heat multiples yeah. of that one if it just says single. Like yeah, yeah. So your monster tails attack, and whatnot. Or one additional attack. Okay, so there's a flail in the Tomb King one that is, is D6 attacks, for example. That That's fine for use with the Spectral Doppelganger, hey, because it's D6 attacks and you get 2D6 attacks worth, do you, or not? No, so that's because it's... Well, it's not one attack or one additional attack. It's just D6 attack. So how would that one work? So this this is talking about the monsters. So you know how the monsters have got like a tail attack? Oh, monsters have weapons. Like that. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So your monsters have got a singular... You know, you'll have two profiles sometimes for your weapon attacks. Oh, so yeah, have I'm like thinking about that other one. They might have Sorry, like I'm a single about... tail yeah, yeah. attack. Yep, mm. yep. That's like the um, yep. Tomb King's, um, yeah, the poison one or what the... Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm getting confused. Yeah, yeah. That. Oh, the... Yep. Question somewhere about the spectral doppelganger one. Can a model arm with two hand weapons yeah. choose to fight with just one weapon? Yes, it can. So that's, that's fine. Uh, when can a model use a lance during any turn in which it charged or counts as having charged, which is what Elio was talking about, um, and which I still think there might be some debate yep. about. It'd probably be the new drilled debate um, that the lances is not <laughs> totally. Uh, um, Hmm. Anyway, here's what it is. Uh, can a missile weapon be used in combat? No. Um, okay, cool. <laughs> War machines. Can a cannon be shot in such a way as to hit an enemy unit that is engaged in combat with a friendly unit? Uh, no, so that's fine. Can a war machine shooting using the ballistic skill of a character that joined it? No. Because a war machine is treated as a single model, you must use the cruise BS. And I guess that's overridden by some of these other characters like engineers yep yeah yeah uh, specific this, yeah i'm sort of glad they did this because people were whinging about this a little bit uh if you're playing 2000 points you get 2000 army composition doesn't matter if you only got 1997 points or whatever you know like it's pretty obvious i thought but yeah you know here's what it is yeah um does an allied contingent have to abide by the restrictions given in the army composition list it's drawn from yes um mm. Okay, so that's because some of the commas. Hang on, am I, it is drawn from. So uh, is that saying? So if you're pulling from a army of infamy with core thirty three percent, then your contingent has to have thirty two percent core. Is that what it's saying? Which I would have thought. So, yeah, well, that's but. that's the way. Yeah, I've read it. It's like yeah, it's like a little miniature army that you need yeah. to bring. So, yeah, mm. cool. That makes sense. Uh, laws of magic. If a unit up, upon which earth and ramparts has been cast is obliged to declare a charge, must it do so? If so, can it make a charge move? Um, so yes, it has to declare a charge, but it can't move, obviously, because earth and ramparts can't actually charge. So I think that's probably mm. pretty fine. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, can a unit upon which earth and ramparts have been cast make a counter charge? No, because you can't charge. Therefore, a counter charge. Oh, is God. A charge. Okay. Right, yeah. More deliveries. I'll be back. Oh, right. right. No worries. <laughs> Maybe these uh, midday ones aren't the best stuff. So, yes, yeah, actually, did we get that wrong? I don't think we're going to... Is that the. Which one are we talking about? Is that the army composition one? Two extra lords on your. Let me read that again. If my opponent and I have... Oh, hang on, it's not, not that one. It's the one under it. Sorry, Sexy's just saying I don't think it means what you guys said. I think, I think he's talking about this composition thing. So does an allied contingent have to abide by the restrictions given in the army composition list it is drawn from? Yes. An allied contingent is a small army within a large army make it, made, use, made using a grand army or army of infamy composition list within a 2,000-point army, for example... An allied contingent of 500 points would have to spend at least 125 on core, could spend no more than 250 points on characters and would be unable to include any units limited to zero to one per 1,000. Okay. Well, that's what I would have thought because it's its own army, but I guess what he's saying is it's clarifying that 
you know, your whole points is 2,000. You can't then say, well, I can get a Lord character. Is that what you're saying, Sexy, I think? Because I thought what we said. Oh, yeah, I uh, what you're saying. Yeah, but we might have been. Sorry. We are skimming this far, so it might sound like we're um, confused. But, yes, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> Lotus Moon. Just don't play with allies. Solved. Yeah. Well, I haven't actually yet, so that's a good point. Um, this is the probably one I got confused with before, Andrew. Can the spell sp Spectral Doppelganger from the Law of Illusion be used with a magic weapon that allows the Welder to make only a single attack? No weapons limited to a single attack can only inflict a single hit, which is fine. So those ones that are D6 attacks do turn into D6 mm. times 2D6 attacks with that spell still. Which is cool because they're not limited to a single attack. Is that right? Yeah, weapons limited to a single attack can only inflict a single hit. Uh... Oh, is that? That's interesting yeah. too. Does that mean? Does that mean though you get to roll two d six attacks with it, uh, and if you roll, say. Um, you know, at least one hit, you get a hit. Do you know what I mean? So you're not rolling one dice, you're still rolling 2d6 to try and get at least one hit. And as long as you get one hit, you get a hit. Is that what that's saying? I'm a little bit confused on what it's actually trying to say. Well, so yeah, one of them. Special doppelganger in the law of illusion that's used for magic weapon that allows the wielder to make only a single attack. No, I think it's just, yeah, I think it's only limited to single attack, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, so what... Uh, Lotus is saying so what, what weapon is... I think limited. there's a flail in... Uh, so it's annoying to bring this up while I'm sharing the screen, the same thing, so it's a bit annoying. Um, it's one of the tomb... I know one of the tomb kings flails. Yeah. Uh, D6. I just can't remember if it's in the Ravening Hall or okay. the Arkham Journal, but um, sorry, let me just skim it on... But it says you only get a single attack. Yeah, okay. I uh, know that one. The single attack one is the, uh, uh, is it the Mace of Hellstrom? Oh, that. Which is one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's Empire. Oh, sorry, it's, sorry, it's not D6. Yeah. It's D, uh, it's D3, sorry. So Crook and Flail D6 is points. a extra attacks yeah. D3. Magic attacks requires two hand strike first weapon. So what I'm asking is, um, yeah, so Lotus is right. Blocking use of Mace of Hellstrom, absolutely. But what about um, what about the Crook and Flail of Radiance plus D three extra attacks? Um, because it's not a single attack, is that still D three, two D six attacks with Spectral Doppelganger? Is what I'm getting at. So I'll let the chat answer that because I'm going to move Ooh, on. Good question. Yeah, because it was one of the ones that people were starting <laughs> to think about using because um, it's a pretty good if that's how it works. But yeah, yeah, I think it got. I think it got ignored and pushed under the cover because of the whole um, Mace of Hellstrom um, abuse. Uh, yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's obviously not strength 10 either. It's only strength is user minus one AP. So it's not. It is strike first, though. Um, so, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sexy just said, oh, fuck knows. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. It is. Uh, some models can be found in one army's, <laughs> one faction's army list, but can be included in an army made using a composition list belonging to a different faction. Dragon Ogre Shagos can be found in the Beastman Brayherd's army list, but be can, can be taken in basically Chaos Grand Army. What list of magic items do such models have? And I have heard people ask about this because, uh, especially with these like the bone grinder giant and stuff is, you know, well, you know, coming from the Orc Arcane Journal, for example. So basically what they're saying is models can purchase magic items from yeah, the list yeah. of common magic, um, as well as the, um, the the book they were drawn from it, or the army list, I guess. So in this case, because dragon yeah. ogres are belonging to Beastman army book, they take Beastman items um, or magic. or So yeah. you can't put chaos magic items on them, which... It's cool. We probably haven't seen, I guess once everything comes out, we might see that more prevalent potentially, maybe. I don't know. Um, but, I mean, it's yeah. probably going to be rare because, I mean, the army books are out except for the Arctic nah, Journal. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Is that it for this one? I'll just open up. Do you want me to open up? Do you want to chat about this quickly now? Or do you want me to? Oh, we're nearly at the hour. So um, if we run like 10 minutes longer, are you okay? Or do you need to go? Oh, uh, yeah, I've got time. Don't worry about it. Okay. I'll bring, no, no, do you want me no. to bring up just the other quick? Um, Sorry. I'll bring up the other two facts, FAQs. I'm not going to go through the legacy ones because it's hard to even see what changed. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to work that out myself. That's what I've been going through. Um, but yeah, no, they're not very big, the um, the forces of fantasy and the um, Ravening Hordes. I do have a uh, Reddit small updates. thread. Uh, it's either a Reddit or a Facebook thread, which people have started to put the differences in from all the different legacy ones. So I might have to try find that and post it on. Oh, uh, if anyone else has that it, post so it on the good. comments. Yeah, 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 that'd be awesome. Um, yeah, I had it up somewhere, but I'll have to find it again. So anyway, this is the first FAQ and errata for the Ravening Hordes. Um, so the Orcs, gigantic spider, add move through cover. Yeah. I don't think we picked that up when we did our Orc and Goblin review, but, um, oh, hang on, gigantic spider. Not mm. the, not the, yeah. Like it's probably because we skipped the mount. Maybe. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, but it was obviously missing that. Chaos Steed, add counter charge to the Chaos Steed's list of special rules. Um, again, I'm guessing that's the Chaos Steed from the mount. So I guess that's just helping them clarify yeah. that if you put that on there. I'm, gu I'm guessing this stuff. I haven't looked at Chaos. Um, Hell Cannon, change the base size to 100 by 150 or and 25 by 25. What was it? I um, can't be bothered looking it up, but I wonder what it was. Surely it. No. It's a big model anyway. I don't. I don't know what else it will fit. I wonder if they just didn't um, even have it. I mean, I got the book here. Yeah, bugger it. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Well, hang on. It's right here. It'd be interesting to see what it was. Yeah. It's in the Warriors of Chaos, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah. Yep. And it's a war machine or a monster. Ooh. They don't have war machines. What was a behemoth? Yeah, it's a. It's the under a monster. The monster. Ah, uh, so well, it just says 100 by 150. Mm. It just doesn't have the handle listed. Mm. Uh, Gifts of Chaos. Change oh. the second paragraph of Gifts of Chaos to represent these strange attributes. Some characters may be given Gifts of Chaos. A gift does not affect a character's mount, should they have one. Okay, so let's just lock that down. Um, and each gift may only be chosen once per yeah. army. I'm assuming that's there. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, that's nothing crazy there. Badlands Ogres on the Arcane Journal just got the points corrected, whatever it was. Uh, Slaughterer's Call. If this yep. model becomes frenzied as a result of the Blood Rage special rule, any units joined will also become frenzied. Cool. I don't really know what it did, so I'm probably bad at the Chaos ones. I need to do a Chaos review. Um, and then Chaos Mutations. Change the second paragraph to... Um, to represent these strange attributes, some models may be given chaos mutations. A mutation does not affect a model's mount. I'm guessing that's what it's doing. If people can mm. clarify that, but um, makes so sense. The, it's the chaos. Gone chaos book clearly got. Ed yeah, the chaos book was clearly edited on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to rush that out. A lot of a <laughs> lot of chaos. Aratus. Chaos, Chaos, Aratus. <clears throat> What's uh, that one on? It's the 111 Chaos yep. Mutations. Change its Chaos. Yeah, it's just it's just putting those, it's just locking these mount things down a bit more by the look of it. Uh, frequently yeah, asked yeah. questions. These are the fun ones. Um, not too many though. Uh, Organ Goblin tries, if a unit of Night Goblins is engaged in combat, can it still release fanatics? Um, yes. And I no, I didn't do it. I, I wasn't in combat when I did it with you, um, but that's good to know. <clears throat> Provide they place within three inches of their concealing unit and not touching the base of any other models. Yes. Cool. It's not a shooting attack or anything, so that's probably why I can do it. Um, if a fanatic moves into contact with a unit uh, that engage in combat. What's that, mate? Oh, I was just saying no. Was, these bloody <clears throat> fanatics, they're <clears throat> insanely powerful. Yeah. 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 Uh, does it hit the units that engaged with combat as well? And um, No, so it's not. It's just basically whatever line passes through. So you can do those annoying things like I did with yeah. you where you sort of clip the back of the unit and you only get that one. Yeah. Um, not like the old yeah. days where it did hit a combat unit and then but there was even a, a fluff piece about it like 
you know, going around between all the units and then popping out the other side. So they all took damage. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> all <laughs> goblins fear elves. If a unit of elves causes fear, does this lead them to cause terror in goblins? No. Why would... No. Yeah, so I think you know. if that there's something, isn't it? If you cause fear and you gain fear or so, something like that, don't you cause terror? You do, yeah. Normally, such, or you, but this is you, not, you know, you fear, fear a unit something that causes. and you're causing, yeah, I guess someone could argue that, but yeah, okay. <clears throat> I mean, it is a, it's not, yeah, it's an FAQ, so that's fine. More is a chaos. If a character with the mark of Nurgle yep. is mounted on a chariot with the mark of chaos undivided, does the chariot benefit from the character's mark or do I have to pay the points to give the chariot the mark of nurgle if you want a chariot mount to have the same benefits from mark of chaos that its rider has you have to pay the points to give the chariot of mark of chaos yeah so they're basically really splitting apart mounts and bearers and stuff to, you know yeah their items only affect that um <clears throat> and then yeah the beastman bray herd can the hag tree fetish be used to reroll rolls to wound caused by bound spells no it's just cool because that's you know ruby ring of ruin and stuff um you don't yeah, get to yeah. do that um, only the spells that are cast by the bearer. So that's cool. And this is that question that was FAQ'd anyway. Can a Necrosphinx make more than one attack each turn with its decapitating strike? No. As noted, it's just one additional attack. Uh, Tomb King's Arcane Journal. And this is just clarifying the armor value. Chariots and Monsters, it even says in the rule book that because it's confused, because it can be complicated, the armor value is listed there and that's what it is. So they have a four plus save, so therefore that's the save even though it, they do say they've got shields and stuff but that is the save you know, like it's not it's not armor and then you add yep. the shield so that makes sense then you add <clears> the <throat> shield yeah yeah uh and then cool. the last one is the forces of fantasy i thought i had it there i thought i had it opened but i didn't here we go here we go. So, it uh, looks like Empire Steam Cannon only fires front arc. Cool. I haven't used it yet, so I didn't even know it didn't. So, Well, I didn't know yep. there was uh, that. Now, the Laurels of Victory. So, this is the one where you're doubling your wounds um, for combat res. When determining your combat result, each unsaved wound caused by an attack made by the bearer of the Laurels of Victory, but not their mount, is worth two combat result points rather than usual. Oh, okay. I remember discussing that with ASB. We weren't sure, like, you know, we'll, you know, is it the model and they all get it? Uh, they're basically, yeah. again, they're splitting mounts out, which is good. Um, add the following to the wizard staff, zero to one per wizard. That is. Could that go That's to Lord? That... <clears throat> Sorry, which one? The Laurels? Yeah, so can you give it to a Lord on a Griffin or something like that? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. I can't yes, remember, that's but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Sweet. Uh, the wizard staff is uh, zero to one per wizard. I think that's the one that gives you plus one to cast or something like that, but it's a common one. So people, and the one above it, I think allows you to like stack it onto the same. So it was, it was just a question of, no, so the one above it specifically <laughs> said, so the one above that, I can't remember which one it is, specifically says zero to one per wizard. Whereas this one didn't. So yeah, then I yeah. guess the question is, could you take two stars yeah. and get plus two to cast? So no, you can't. Um, knightly <laughs> virtues to represent this. Some models may be given a knightly virtue. Okay, and this is just a mount. I'm guessing it's the same, just the mount split out. They don't get it. Um, a unit yep. in the lance formation with a unit strength five or more claims plus one. So they're basically giving the lance the same closed order benefit. Yep. Basically. Which is good. Sense. Yep. Uh, elven honors to represent this. Some characters may be given an elven honor. Each honor gives a character. Uh, is this the same same issue? Just honor does not affect a model's mount. Yeah, which is cool. Um, actually, just re sorry. The first ever one we just skipped over back in the other one. I just was remembering uh, was about the panic. I think what changed is it's models lost, not. Uh, not the unit strength or whatever of was it models or not wounds um i think that was the one that we missed for that you know that first panic test sort of clarity uh in the in the rule book faq yeah 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 uh, um 
And I said, oh, yeah, I don't see taking what the difference heavy was. Heavy casualties. Yeah. Yeah, that one. I think it did change. Yeah. Um, I think it was talking about unit strength versus. I just remembered because I did read it. Um, unit loses more than twenty five percent of the models it contained at the start of the phase. It's models rather than whatever is in the current book, um, which is different. I can't remember, but one of them. Sorry, massive sidetrack there. Frequently asked questions. Emperor man, uh, are unsaved wounds caused by the mount of a model bearing the laurels? It's the same thing there. No, only unsaved wounds caused by the bearer. Uh, count so it's just an FAQ on the uh, errated <laughs> item as well. <clears throat> can a Bretonian army mm. pray for the blessing of the lady if it includes an allied contingent? Yes, it can because it's does that because the whole army has the blessing of the lady's rule. Uh, clarity on the bolt thrower basically, it's either the uh, number of actual ranks like one, two, like if you've got one horse, then two, then three, that's three all up or three files based on the the widest file in the lance formation, which makes sense. It must just been hard to work out, I guess. I haven't played with the lance, so wasn't sure where the confusion came nah. in. Uh, it's good to have it Need clarified Joshua. though. Yeah. If a character whose mount has a different yeah. size, this is <laughs> this is a weird one. If a character whose mount has a different size base to the models in the unit making up a lance formation, which is to join that unit. So I'm thinking, am I thinking like that lady on the unicorn? I don't know. The lance formation offers a bit more flexibility than other formations. For example, it's perfectly acceptable to place a character such as a duke or baron at the front of the lance. In the case of a handmaid and a lady of the sh lady, the shield of the lady special rule allows such models to be placed at the rear of such units. Alternatively, they can be placed within the unit. In this case, the extra base size will make very little difference to the shape of the unit. Now, I'm just guessing here. Yeah. Are we talking about, like, is that the one on the unit? Is that on a, like a 50 boat? Like, is anyone can clarify that without me looking it up? Um, geez, it's going to make, I don't know. My anal retentiveness just says that. It's just, if they're not all the base, same base size, it's going to be so weird um, in a lance, but it yeah. is what it is. Yeah, it would. When a unit in lance formations engage in combat every model on the outside counts as being in base contact which we knew but how many enemy models count as being in base contact with the lance and this is where people were faqing like you know you draw a imaginary line and that's how many and they're saying nah yeah. <coughs> that is the unicorn okay gilthos confirmed yeah the unicorn 40 by 60. yeah so it is that one so that's the thing you got a 40 by 60 amongst 30 by 60s yeah. but putting them at the back oh, i mean just ugly I want to see Josh design his 3D printed movement trays to fit that in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I have to talk yeah. on the next podcast about that one. Uh, when yeah. a unit in Lance formation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry, I jumped back into this. So, yeah, the whole full fighting rank of the charged unit uh, is in base contact. So, they're getting all their attacks. So, you, a Lance formation does not want to be charging a, like a a line of monstrous infantry or something. Nah. Because, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I get what they're saying, but man, that's, yeah, that's, um, it's, it's simple rule to do, but it's just also, I don't know, it sort of nerfs it a little bit, I think, depending on which army. Like, if you're playing against ogres, they're all getting their full attacks on that front rank. Um, yeah, some multiple attacks. Yeah. What was that? I don't know. It's, yeah. You don't reckon it'll make things. much of a difference? Oh, I was just saying, it's one of those things. I would have, nah, I would like to see like, yeah, the, the width of the, the rear going yeah. straight forward. Yeah. Can all make the full, full complement. I think that was fair. Mm. But nah, well, they've sort of buffed what it is. people getting attacked by them, I think. So they've actually debuffed the lance a bit more. Um, and then the dead yeah. area in between is uh, accidental. Well, someone's contact. running, yeah, <clears throat> line hammer. Hmm. Yeah. Love it. It's kind of crazy. Uh, Wood Elf Realms. The Hawkeye Archer rule allows a waste stalker to target an enemy character it can draw a line of sight to and target specific models. Does this apply to magic items that allow them to cast a magic missile? No. This rule applies only to the Azurei, Azurei Longbow Hawkeye that... Hawk eyed they may be, but that does not mean they can snipe at enemy characters with powerful spells. Okay, fair enough. 
Uh, the wood elf realm rules, sort of like the Bretonian one, uh, they can bring this this wood. If they've got an allied contingent, they can bring it. Um, and I guess in order for a wood elves to gain an extra wood, the army they are part of must have the woodland ambush. Yeah. So if you're taking um, an allied contingent of wood elves, uh, they they don't mm. get this wood, which is fair enough. The Bow of Lauren allows Wood Elf characters to make a number of shots equal to their attacks characteristic. How does this interact with Enchanted Arrows? When firing an Enchanted Arrow, it is assumed the model is firing once as normal. Okay, so, yeah, okay, that's cool. That's probably a bit of a nerf. I don't know how people are playing it. Um, okay, so they're just actually, yeah. Lotus is saying this. Um the, the Bow of Lauren is one, is silly in my view, and makes the item go from decent to just lull rather than three, yeah, yeah, exactly. He'd rather three glade guard. So, yeah, because you're rolling, like, two sets of dice again, you know, like. Mm. And you're only shooting up to, what, three shots, four yeah. shots, four shots. Yeah, a bit silly. Can a wizard with the Warden of Safri or an Onan purchase magic armor? No. Okay. Sorry, Gilthal, I'm just catching up. She's absolutely auto-includes so strong. Oh, God, that's the unicorn. Yeah, okay. Well. I want to see Josh's creativity with his lance mounts then, uh, movement trays. He probably yeah. wasn't putting her in there. He probably G hasn't got Gummo's to anal retentiveness. Mm. <laughs> a bit yeah. weird. Cool. Anyway, well, we finally got it. We've been waiting for this for... Lopsided lance formations. <laughs> yeah. Been waiting this for ages. I, I mean, do you think it's going to change? It doesn't feel like it's changing our games, but it, the clarity is... Uh, definitely make it feel like you're, you know, playing correctly, so to speak, which is good. But just before we close out with this, guys, yep. we won't be here much longer. What, uh, just let us know, what do you think of the FAQ, which ones they missed? What, uh, did they cause any more confusions? It'd be interesting to know what you guys think. Um, yeah, Andrew, anything, closing thoughts on it? Like, do you think, like I said, I don't think it's going to radically change ours because uh, we were doing drilled anyway, but I guess now you sort of uh, know you can lean into it a lot more especially when you're building lists and stuff yeah it's good the um the the nerf bat didn't come out too hard like some people are like oh you gotta do this and do that because this is too powerful that's too powerful so if they can slowly chip away at it um i think that's going to be the good approach yeah um, yeah yeah get that data up and just <clears throat> You know, see how people are, and, and they've done that with a few things, especially like for monsters with the um, just like nerfing, you know, carry on of certain abilities or you know bits and pieces like that. Yeah, they've nerfed some of that. They also did, and we can probably talk about this uh, and the podcast or something next week with the actual article that was released with this, which wasn't very big, but I guess did make the two big points I, I liked about the article just quickly was. One, that yes, it is massively popular and they're like really pleased with that. So that's really good. Um, but two, they understand that there's been a lot of little issues, I think. And, and it sounded like reading through the lines, I think they're sort of acknowledging there's potential issues right now with, you know, monsters. I'm not, they're not saying this, but like monsters and stuff, but because it's so new, they'd rather just FAQ some things and then keep, keep it running to really find out what's busted or not, which I think is a good, like... You know, 10th edition for F8, uh, 40K was a bit like, – it looks like a really good edition from an outside. I don't play it. Um, but, you know, it needed full day one FAQs yeah. and then they fully had to change a rule which radically changed that. Like there was some stuff that fundamentally changed it and then because they're doing it every three months, it feels like it's a totally different game and I think it's pissing a few people yeah. off. Like some of them. Other people love it, which is great. But – I sort of feel like I agree with what they're saying mm. here. It's like, hey, let's just keep seeing what is busted here. You know, like let's not just knee jerk it too much, um, which is good. Uh, overall, sexy said four yeah. and a half out of five. Lotus said overall the facts good. Addresses some obvious things that people try to exploit. Still would like to see more items become infantry or cav only. Yeah, that's. A, I mean, it's a good way to like lock stuff down. They only did it with one of them. Agreed. Oh, Gilthos, Plague of Rust, big miss. Yeah, true. Just clarify that whole <laughs> armor save stuff. Yeah. yeah, and they almost did it with you can't stack regen like you can't stack um, ward. It would have been nice for them to, again. My gut feel is what I said about all the other terminology because they haven't defined that stuff great. If they then went and defined it now it potentially might cause way more problems reading the book. So I don't, I don't know. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, cool. Uh, thanks for the stream. I can see uh, Warriors of Chaos running some new lists, especially now that adding it Lord to Chosen Knights doesn't make them worse. Yeah, that's the. I'm guessing is that the Swift Stride, or the uh, sorry the uh, Counter Charge as well. Is that that? Is that what they added uh, for the Chaos Steed? I think it was off memory. Chaos is poor. That's why I need to get a Chaos Army and play it a bit more because I, I don't know Chaos enough. <laughs> uh, cool. Anyway, thanks, guys. That was our first mid midday yep. stream. Again, went over an hour, which we always do. Um, I think in another week or so, Andrew and yeah. I are going to start doing some hobby hour. So if you guys are around for hobby hour. And I'd love to get it to the point where, man, I'm happy to share the stream URL to come on. If you've got a camera and you can talk and while we're hobby, let's get a few people on and be good. <laughs> cool anyway anything else Andrew, great power well, comes uh, great responsibility just remember that yeah, that's right <laughs> cool guys thanks for uh no, and no, thanks for no, the, no, those donations good. guys right at the beginning really appreciate it <laughs> yeah yeah it. yeah we'll we'll get we'll get a jar and a fourth gyrocopter for andrew <laughs> okay <laughs> see you guys bye